Now, is there any harm in hiding whether your baby is a boy or a girl? One couple have made the headlines because they have decided to bring up their child gender neutral by keeping its sex a secret, even from close family. Uh, Hobbit Humphrey and Jake England Johns call their baby, whose name is Anush, by the pronoun they, and they dress them in both girls' and boys' clothes. The child's grandmother only discovered the baby's sex when she changed its nappy when Anush was 11 months old. Well, it's certainly got people talking. We're going to discuss it now uh, with the iPaper news journalist Benjamin Butterworth and social affairs commentator Sonia Paulson. Welcome both. Morning. Um, it feels like these kind of stories hit the headlines quite a lot as the public start to explore gender issues out in the open, Benjamin. Mm. But this has caused quite, quite a bit of controversy. Can you see why? I can see why, because it's unusual. It's not something that we're used to at the moment. But I think society is moving in a direction where we understand that gender is a social construct. There might be good reasons for it. It's a way that we express ourselves. Lots of people feel it very uh, profoundly, and genders are a good thing. But the fact is that what we project onto a child and onto a baby is just that. It's a projection. And what these parents have said is that not that our baby won't have a gender, not that it can't express itself as it grows up, but that it should choose that for itself rather than being forced onto having blue toys or pink toys for a boy or a girl. And I think that's a really healthy step forward. Sonia, is this, as the parents intend, protecting their child from being influenced? I understand. Or is it about to create more confusion? For instance, when that child goes to school where gender, uh, you know, is, is, is very clear right. a lot of the time when children go to nursery. And I understand school. why they've done it. I've spent the last 10 months making a film about this very issue about gender because obviously it's such an explosion in our world. It's, you know, gone from a, a fringe issue to obviously being centre of focus. So it fascinates me, interests me greatly and I think that their intentions were good. I think that their aim was very much what Benjamin said and that is they didn't want other people to project stereotypes on them, gendered stereotypes on them. But mm. however, they have made the classic mistake, and that is they have conflated gender with sex. What they've done is they've hidden the sex of the child. And it's really important, if they wanted to be progressive, what they could have done is fully acknowledge who that child is. And every time they, they encounter adults trying to project gender ideas on that child, i.e. what toys that child should play with, what clothes they should wear, the parents should have challenged it. We don't change a patriarchal system by denying it exists. We can only change it by confronting it head on. So I don't agree with what they've done, no. But is it not the case that most people's understanding of gender is entirely based on the sex they're told a person is? You know, almost everybody is either male or female biologically right. at birth. Right. And then people make assumptions based only on that and treat them that way. So right. even if the parents, let's say that it was biologically female, even if the parents didn't shower them in pink things, right. everyone else probably still would. I read the story of the, this family and actually they did no different to what many parents did, including my Myself, and that is I dress my daughter in what wasn't then called gender neutral clothes but clearly is now and that is sometimes I dressed her in clothes that were more boyish and sometimes more girlish. She's now 22, she's studying composition, she's in a male dominated world. My daughter has never seen obstacles and so I just think that they've made a bit of a fuss about nothing and my problem with it is it's a serious problem is we are actually now telling children that it is possible for them to have been born in the wrong body and that is really problematic and so I think that they've rather than be protect their child, they've actually made their child more vulnerable. Is it... Oh, so, sorry, but isn't part of the problem here, and I say this is the son of two biologists, look, it's pretty clear that there is a difference between sex and, there is, uh, and gender. Mm. But you can't tell me that there isn't a very strong causal link between the two of them. Absolutely. The vast majority of people who are born sexually male will identify in gender terms as male. The overwhelming majority of women born, born, with, uh, born uh, with the, of the female sex will identify. But there's two things here. You've got, you've got your biology and then you've got the things that we associate with being biologically male or biologically female. And I think we just completely lose sight of but how many... There are some, though. I am bigger. You, do, men tend to be bigger. Yeah, no, those are... Oh, there are thousands of differences. If you talk to a biologist, there are thousands of differences between males and females. And your parents will have well. told you this. And behavioural as but well. But so many yes. of the ways that we're brought up and the ways that we're socialised and customised are to do with what we assume, the social constructs that we've built 
heal over time. Absolutely. But what I'd also question is, of course, some people are born in the wrong body. And that's, you know, they identify no. fundamentally no. with that a different is a, gender. I, I have to take assume. complete issue with that. That is a really dangerous statement. But you and don't we... think transgender people exist? No, no. And you've just taken a leap that is inappropriate, Ben. Listen, well, I was sorry, I'm calling you Ben. I'm making, it very, making myself very familiar with you right now. Mm -hmm. No, listen, first of all, the idea that we're born in the wrong body, I think, is an absolute betrayal to children, a real betrayal. Rather than tell children that you are allowed to be a feminine male or a masculine female, we're actually doing what, what amounts now largely to some sort of conversion therapy with children. You know that's taking place. We're putting children on a pathway at the age of even three, four, and by 11, we're giving them hormone blockers that we haven't even got long-term studies about. Well, so you the can't idea stop that till 16. Well, but no, it's... that's not true. They're doing it at 11 now. I've, I, I, like I said, I just made a film. I've got all evidence. Okay, of well, this. we are running out of time, so I'll yes. give Ben the, the right to reply to that before we have to bring well, this to a close. Saying, some people are born into the wrong body, no. and the truth <laughs> is, the conversion therapy that they face is that if you're born with male parts but you identify as a woman, you deserve the right to be yourself as much as anyone else. And I think that is a tolerant and progressive thing to do, and we should all have the freedom to be ourselves tolerant, and not have it forced Tolerant and progressive is completely accepting people for who they are without making them alter themselves surgically or physically in any way, just fully Those embracing Those people were born into the wrong are. body and deserve the right to be themselves. It is not possible to be born into the wrong body and that is a myth in the same way as when we say that, that gender was assigned at birth, that is also another but myth. The truth is it is observed, it is okay, observed just views, like sex is. The views of Sonia and Benjamin, I know you will have a view on this at home at Sky News, hashtag Sunrise. I've got a feeling this debate is going to continue Probably. after sunrise this morning, uh, but we have run out of time. Thank you both. Thank you.